Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode here on HC Brief. And this week we are going to be covering the new Ingford Wi-Fi temperature controller. So as you guys know, it's always a good idea to have a backup to a backup. Obviously, a lot of our thermometers or heaters in our reef tanks have their own temperature controller built in. Having an external one such as the Inkbird is just another small safety feature. So in opening up the box, you're going to be able to see here you have the unit itself. Now followed by the unit on it, you have a total of four buttons. So one of the buttons is a power button on the very top. Uh, on the front face of it, on the very left, that is your Wi-Fi button. The other two buttons are programming buttons. I didn't use the buttons to program it. I used the Wi-Fi app only because it makes it a lot easier. It's a bit more intuitive and there's really nothing to get confused about. Um, and then obviously in the front, you do have your um, output controller. This is whatever you, obviously a heater you connect here is going to be turning it either off or on. So next you do have an, an audio jack. So in the audio jack is where your probes go in. A really cool feature about the Inkbird, um, and this is you know, not a new company, they've been out for a while. Inkbird has been making controllers not for reef, reef aquariums, uh, they were just making them in general and I think they noticed a lot of reefers and a lot of aquarists using them so they specifically redesigned these probes. As you can see they're all plastic. Not only are they all plastic, but they give you dual probes. So they're a backup to a backup if one probe fails or if one probe is acting up or you know, whatever happens to it, it does have a backup and it's uh, kind of getting both of them, making sure they're both within the proper parameters um, and that's kind of how it takes the measurement from that. <clears throat> I believe if one fails, I think it'll operate on one alone, but again, uh, I would have to actually read into this or contact the manufacturer, but it's really cool that it does come uh, with the two temp controllers. Now, another nice feature about this bad boy is very compact. The screen itself is very visible, does have a, a backlight from what I can see. And you get to, uh, here on the very front of the screen, you get to your high temperature and then your low temp. So the, the high, sorry, the low is where it's gonna kick on, the high is where it's gonna shut off uh, for the heater. And then you have your current temperature being displayed here on the left. And you can see there it's attempting to heat, uh, you know, whatever. Um, is connected to obviously there's nothing connected so it's not going to heat and then the Wi-Fi symbol on the top. Now for the Wi-Fi here I'm kind of testing it out you can see I'm putting my hand to it seeing the temperature come up um, but yeah this is just me making sure it is working properly everything's working as it should so the next part of the programming which is going to be very straightforward it's all done on the phone sent through your phone iPad Android device um, if you have Apple, it's going to be iOS. If you have Android, I think it's Google Play is where you guys get your apps. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys the next steps to setting this up. So be sure you download the app. Uh, that's what You can actually scan it. I don't know if you guys saw on the box. It comes with the code, um, a QR code that you can scan. It'll take you directly to either the App Store or it'll tell you, to. I think, to Google Play. Is it? Uh, that's for Android users. So once you do have the app downloaded, make sure you do create a password, make sure you do create the username, get all that set up, because the steps I'll be showing you is assuming you've done all that beforehand. So once you're done, this is what the menu should look like on the bottom left. You're able to turn on and off the unit. Also on the settings menu, you have, uh, you're able to change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. You're able to calibrate the temperature. If there's a unit you trust a little bit more with the temperature, you can change that. A high temp, you can adjust it here, and it will obviously give you alert if it ever reaches too high. The low is done on the low temp value. And then for the continuous heating time, this is a great menu. If ever the unit, let's say for instance, uh, generally takes an hour to reach temperature, if for any reason the unit one day takes two to three hours and you set it to two to three hours max runtime, it'll automatically shut off the heater. So this is assuming that the unit fails, that it's not working properly in the temperature, um, it's not reading accurately. So it's a great safety feature if you want to use it. And personally, um, I would leave it for about an hour longer than your unit typically runs. And this you're going to be able to see in the main menu under graph. So you're probably going to let it want to run for about a day so you get a better idea on how long it takes to uh, heat up your tank. In the main menus where you're going to be setting up your temperature, so T1 on the bottom left, this is going to be the temperature where your heater turns on. 
So this is going to be the lowest threshold of where the unit is going to activate. And then followed by that, you're going to have T2. So T2 is going to be your highest threshold where the unit shuts off. So I'm going to leave mine 77, 78. You can you know, adjust yours wherever you like to maintain your reef tank. One of the next menus we do have is the settings menu. This one's very basic, pretty self-explanatory. If you wish to rename your unit, whatever the tank is, or if you have multiples and you want to rename them, uh, you can do that here. But other than that, you know, some updates can be found here as well as some other stuff. You know, if you want to send them a message or anything of that sort, you can do that in this menu as well. While we're at it, I actually tested the max temperature. So you can see here it would actually... It's flashing and not only that, but it sends you an alert on your phone via text letting you know, hey, your maximum threshold has been achieved, so check on it. Not only that, but you get a very loud audible noise on it that trust me, you could, you'd probably hear in your house. Um, so this is very cool, great safety feature. Not only will you get an alert, but there's also a loud audible sound letting you know your tank has reached max temperature for you to check on it. So believe it or not guys, that's all it really took to program it. Some very simple menus, very intuitive, very easy to do. It probably took me about one, one, two minutes to fully program it. So the next thing is very self-explanatory. Obviously hook your unit up to an outlet where it's going to get power and you're going to want to also run your probes. Uh, you know, pretty, you can run them wherever you want. If you want them in your display, if you want them in your sump, obviously I wouldn't want them in my display because you don't want to see them. Um, but me personally, I'm going to put them in my main drain. The reason I want to put them here is because this is the water coming directly from the tank. So it's going to give me the most accurate measurement as to what the tank is. Because you know in the sump, while it runs through the chambers, the water may cool down a little bit. Uh, but this is going to give me a very accurate reading from the water coming directly from the tank. Because honestly, that's where the fish are. That's where the corals are. So it's going to be most important to me. But again, you can pretty much put them anywhere you want. If you want to put them in your return chamber, your skimmer chamber, it really uh, doesn't matter. Just make sure you get them out of any uh, return pump so they don't get caught in the pump. Also, away from any skimmer so they don't get sucked in. Uh, but other than that, it's very straightforward. Being plastic probes, you don't have to worry about them corroding. Cleaning them, you probably don't really need to worry about them much either. Um, <clears throat> you know, if it really bugs you, you don't want to do a clean on them. You know every year or once a year or you know twice a year whatever it is you'll surely be able to do that once you have everything installed all your wiring is nice and neat and you're very happy in how it came out really just sit back and let the unit do its thing one tip i do want to give you guys when setting this up you want to make sure that the thermostat on your heater itself is set a little bit higher than normal reason for that if you, if the thermostat in your heater is set too low the ink bird will be trying to heat the tank it's going to be the the output is going to be on the whole time but since the heater thermostat shuts off it's not going to be reaching temperature so make sure you set your heater thermostat just a hair higher not too high because uh, again if the if the ink bird did fail it's going to default to that the good thing is there's plenty fail safes but again be sure again you set your thermostat on the heater itself about one to two degrees higher so the ink bird is able to control and it's not on the whole time trying to heat the tank and the thermostat on the heater is shutting the heater off. Other than that guys, sit back, enjoy it, let it do, it, do its thing. I had an older model of an ink bird on the JBJ. It was way bigger, way more bulky. Luckily they made this one really nice. It's really cool that it's Wi-Fi compatible so you can check on your temperature wherever you are since it does connect to Wi-Fi. So that's going to conclude this week's video. I thank each and every one of you very much for watching. I want to give a special thanks to a fellow reefer that followed me on Instagram. He actually sent me this to review. If any of you guys out there want me to review a product, maybe I haven't, always feel free to contact me, whether email, Instagram. If you'd like to send me a product, I'd be more than happy to review it. So I want to give him a special thank you for sending me this product. But yeah, guys, it's a great security. If you want to add it to your system, you can never be too careful with these super expensive reef tanks that we spend so much time, money, and love into. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. Thank each and every one of you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.